This episode we're going to look at custom net tables and this is a way that you can keep data up to date for all players in the match and when people disconnect they will when they return again and reconnect they'll be updated with this data too which basically means it's persistent across your game mode until your game mode ends and everyone finishes the match. Now to start this off what we need to do is create a new file called custom net tables.txt with underscore between them like this and it has to be the name of this file if you don't have this name of the file correct in the right place it's not going to work so if we go to our project folder we go into scripts and we create a new file and we call this custom net tables.txt now let's open this up and in here we can go and copy and paste this from the wiki this is just a, the example that they give you and there's example net table one and example net table two. We're only going to do one net table for this because we don't really need a second one and we're going to call it game state. You can call it whatever you want, but we're going to call it game state and we're going to save that. Now you have to remember the name of this because you're going to be using it in a minute. So let's look at our code now in add on game mode Lua as part of the default code that comes with your template there's an onTink function and this is called once every second and we're gonna start writing our code once we hit the in-game progress. You don't necessarily have to do this, you can write this wherever you want, but this is kind of like a proof of concept of this custom net table stuff. But before we start writing code, we wanna look at the API. So here's the custom net table manager. This is your global accessor here and down here we have two functions, get and set. It's pretty straightforward. So let's go and write some code and have a look at this. So we have custom net table set table value and we have get table value. So when we want to get a value, we need to specify. We'll first do with setting the table because we don't have specified what like our table is called. So we're using game state as our net table as the root and then we have a key which is going to be called uh, round data we'll call it and we'll go in here and this is going to be our value so we can just set value equals zero this key can be named anything you can just set this is just going to be a table here and this is what's going to be returned when you get it so we'll go get table value and we're going to go get game state and go round data so we need to put that in percent in the quotes and now this will end up working and we'll get a value returned as zero if we are a table that has a key called value and it'll be zero so that's not really useful to us right now but what you do need to know is that if you get a value and it doesn't have it it hasn't been set yet it will return nil and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and make it so that it also increments every second so we're going up by one every second as we're going along just as a proof of concept of this so we're going to go local uh, my table equals this so we'll say my table is this we'll check if my table is equal to nil then do something else do something else so we're just going to copy and paste this in here if it's currently nil we're going to set the value to zero if it's not nil we're going to write something else we got to get the value from our table so we're going to go local new next value equals my table dot value plus one and we're going to set the table value to now be the next value so like this and now what will end up happening is that this number will update so next time we go and get it it'll print it out so if it, the table is nil we're going to go and print these out right so print uh, value is nil and else we're going to end up printing out value and print out what the value is my table dot value this is just before we update it so this will end up calling probably start counting at zero and then it'll go one two three four and so forth so let's run our code and see what it ends up looking like so now in our console here we'll say the value is nil then it says value is zero value is one value is two three four and so forth so now you see that it's end up working here and what's really good about this 
is that now all the players know about this data and that you could update this in any sort of way. So this can be used for numerous things. Uh, example that I'm using in my game mode for is for the custom states. So I want to have different stages so that you have the fighting stage and then there's a post game or a post round stage of where you do like different things, but you can store other data. So like, let's say here in value, I want to know the last time that the time updated. So I could go like last update and go like game rules, get game time. And that will get like the current game time and it will save this in there as well. Now, what you do need to know about custom net tables is that regardless of what you end up using for in the end or what data you're storing, there is a total overall limit to how much you can get. Let's see if I can see it here. It's a certain number of like kilobytes or something along the lines or bytes. That you, okay, here it is 16,000 bytes that you can store through this and that will be network between all the players. And if you go above that, it says it'll throw up an error message and crash your custom game. So because there's a limit, one of the ways that you can get around it, if you end up ever coming across this error, and it's very unlikely that it's going to end up happening, but this is also kind of useful for other stuff that you're kind of doing in your custom game. So the idea is to use constants and Valve are already using them. And if you've been doing custom games up to this point, you've already been using Valve's already existing ones. So to give you an example, is the custom game state. So if we go game state, where is it? State, here we go, state hero pick, state intro. So you save a value like this and you set it to four. You have another value and you set it to five and you would access this each time like that. And these are pretty much constants and a really nice way of putting these together so that you can access them globally. And that's really what you want to do is to create a new file and call it just constants.lua. And what you can do in here is like, let's say uh, I have like a custom game state uh, warm up. That's what I end up having my mode and that could be like equal to zero. Now I end up having other ones like uh, I have a looting stage. So loot, that would be equal to one. Then there's like a fighting stage. And there's a small part that's after that called a post fighting stage. So these are all named separately. And what's usually used for constants is all uppercase and an underscore between each word. That's just a very similar format and you might have noticed up until this point with valves. So it's typically a good idea when you're coding to keep a similar format to what's already there with other code. So in this, we can go back to our add on game mode.lua and go require constants. So this is the name of our file constants and that will include them pretty much in on top. So if we wanted to then we could go like uh, say this guy and we want to go like set state to this we can access that there if we wanted to print this out print constant value is this and we want to print that out you can do a comma as well between print and it will separate the value and this is kind of like a useful sometimes rather than concatenating the strings so if you wanted to get the value you can print it out like that and you can access this from anywhere and the idea of having this in a separate file is that other files can access it. So if you have an ability that needs to know about these constants, they can do it through here and you can check to see like the game state as well from your abilities as well using this get table value and so forth. So these are just like pretty constants are kind of covered here as well, which is pretty nice. It's kind of a short thing to add in at the end. So if you want to see more custom game tutorials, Make sure you subscribe and drop a like if this video was helpful for you.